The first thing I would like to highlight, not a lot of people realize that, but we're actually a maritime operator ourselves. Oh, right. As you know, we do provide connectivity from undersea cables still VSAT coverage and one of the things that we have even in Joburg we have a, a vessel which is owned by Orange and only busy with making sure that the uh, undersea cables are provided but however that is the connectivity aspect and I okay. guess we should be talking about what we're doing beyond the connectivity yes please because a lot of our maritime customers are asking us to actually help them on this digital transformation path and that path moves from networks flexible networks bandwidth on demand seasonable bandwidth towards much more platform capabilities, cyber secure cloud capabilities, because we're talking about the data journey, which is very, very relevant to obtain as much data as possible to drive these cost efficiencies. So from a traditional network, moving towards much more cloud solutions, bringing it into platform solutions to actually help the employees on board of the vessels, which is an important aspect. IoT sensors on board of the vessels, communicating via VSAT back into the, the back office and running analytics on them. And top it all off, we have our innovation capabilities. My role actually is I do twofold. I have an advisory capability with my team, so we provide consultancy, strategy consultancy to our customers, but I also open up much more than in the past doors inside the bigger orange organization. As you know, we're a $40 billion company. Yes, we do have an odd 275 million mobile uh, subscribers. We have Orange Labs, 15 labs worldwide, some of them very close by in the region. Mm -hmm. And we bring these capabilities proactively to our customers. The way how we position it is we are a network integrator. So we help to ensure that all these different networks that are relevant, and we talk a plethora of different networks, that we integrate them. And that we actually try to run the data consistently and seamless across these networks. Because what we see now, and it was mentioned several times at this conference, the role of the CIO is changing dramatically, I oh, would yes. say. Mm -hmm. So that one, two percent, three percent investment in IT is actually driving the future growth of the business. And within that IT, data is a key priority. So we facilitate the transportation of data, the aggregation of data, the collection, the safe storage of data, all in an end-to-end -end model. What we see happening is that when you go on this digital transformation journey, there is a certain resistance from various users. First and foremost, you talk about creating much more transparency in the operations. Now, not everyone is equally charmed by this because you could have the feeling that the employees might say, guys, I'm being much more controlled by headquarters and I oh, lose yeah. some of this flexibility. So what we do is we make sure that in certain applications, certain use cases, we address those demands and needs. And if we can offer additional services that reflect that offers on the sea, but also beyond the working hours, I would say, having security, um, having the possibility of medical diagnosis that can be done on board and seamless connectivity with the hospital, would that be required? Or even offering, let's say, uh, the bandwidth that is required for a Skype call with your family. So I would say, yes, we provide the offers on board, but we do not underestimate the after office hours for the crew benefits. We find that this is a key uh, factor in uh, accepting the digital transformation because if we only look at the uh, office use, so to speak, uh, then there would be a number of people who would say, I'm not being recognized for my work. I'm not being. So having these additional features, these additional services is key to adopting all this technology on board.